Hey YouTube, while traveling through Western Australia, my 70 to 210 millimeter lens developed a bit of a problem. Anytime I would take a picture at an aperture other than wide open, the picture would come out overexposed. If you've followed my videos for quite a while, you'll know that I had the same problem with a 50 millimeter manual lens a couple years ago. This issue occurs when the lens gets too hot for some reason, and some of the lubrication grease loses its viscosity and starts to get into the iris. The grease is there to make the zoom mechanism move very uh, smoothly in this lens, but once it got into the iris, it caused it to move very slowly, not allowing it to close down completely when a picture is taken. This causes extra light to get to the sensor and the image to be overexposed. Like the manual 50mm lens, I'll be attempting to clean the iris of my zoom lens in order to return it to full functionality. Starting at the mount end, I remove the two screws that hold on the electrical connector, taking care not to lose the small grounding spring that presses against the back. I then remove three screws that allowed a small plastic dust cover to be removed. Once the plastic dust cover is removed, I mark the orientation of the metal lens mount and then remove the four screws that held it in place. The metal lens mount also housed the arm which connects the camera to the aperture. I checked to make sure that this was moving freely and wasn't the reason that the aperture wasn't moving properly. Rolling back the grip tape revealed a piece of electrical tape that held the focal length indicator to the zoom ring. After removing that tape I was able to mark its location against the zoom ring and remove it revealing a small electronics package. This electronics package consisted of an encoder which tells the camera the focal length when you take the picture and a small chip that helps the camera generate its EXIF data. I then removed the small wiper arm from the encoder and was able to mark the orientation and then remove the assembly which held the encoder and the EXIF electronics. With that assembly removed I was able to get a good grip on that last group of elements which was then unscrewed. Had I googled this procedure beforehand I would have known that this is as far as I could get without any special tools. So I'm going to show you how I clean this lens eventually then I'm going to show you some of the interesting things I found after disassembling it farther than I needed. After partially reassembling the lens having found that I couldn't go any further I used a q-tip to get as much isopropanol into the crevices around the mechanism of the iris. The isopropanol can actually dissolve the grease and loosen it up by getting the isopropanol into that mechanism and then actuating it a number of times. I was able to eventually get all of that sticky grease out and allow the iris mechanism to move freely. After that relatively simple cleaning, I was able to reassemble the lens, mount it on the camera and found that it worked perfectly. When removing the focusing element from the lens, I marked it in several places to make sure that everything went back together in the same way. If you don't put it back together in the same way, you might lose your infinite focus. That means you won't be able to focus on distant objects, stars, or the moon. This is made extra difficult because the screw that allows the focusing element to move in and out relative to the rest of the lens has many threads. Unlike a quarter twenty thread that you use to mount a camera to a tripod, this focusing thread has many parallel threads side by side. You could get the focusing element to move by a multiple of these, making it very difficult to reassemble. The zoom mechanism contains something called floating elements. These are lenses that aren't fixed to the lens or moved using a screw like the focusing elements. These elements move in nonlinear tracks, allowing them to move in very complicated ways compared to the linear way in which a focusing element moves. As I was reassembling the lens, I found one more interesting thing, which is this pair of open contacts. They end up being connected to the focusing mechanism by a rod and indicate to the camera when it is in a macro focusing mode. Using legacy lenses is a great way to keep the cost down if you're a hobbyist photographer as long as you keep in mind that occasionally you're going to have to do your own camera repair. If you watch the YouTube channel AVE you'll know his good advice that if it's already broken it's not like you're going to make it any worse. 
I hope you found this video interesting, and if you'd like to see more like this, check out my channel. Thanks for watching.